bring you developing news. And the stories behind the headlines. This is Storycon. I'm Patrick Paez. I'm Edwin Gao. Some stories we're watching this Monday, October 14. The Senate Committee on Women has requested the appearance of Pastor Apollo Kibuloy in a public hearing on October 23. The hearing to be led by Senator Risa Ontiveros will tackle cases involving the Kingdom of Jesus Christ founder. Kibuloy is currently detained at Camp Krame in Quezon City while facing charges of human trafficking and child and sexual abuse. The Ombudsman junks admin cases or admin charges against former Health Secretary Francisco Duque III. This is related to the alleged corruption in the procurement or the buying of pandemic, re pandemic response supplies from Farmily Corporation in 2020. The Ombudsman says it is no longer relevant to hold Duque accountable for the cases since his term has long ended. He was initially found guilty of misconduct and gross neglect of duty. A recent OCTA survey showed a slight increase in pro market sentiment with 38% of respondents identifying as such. This is a 2% increase from March of 2024. Meantime, support for the Duterte family saw a 1% decrease at 15%. 26% do not align with any political group, while 7% support the opposition and 14% are undecided. Of course, I have to add that the margin of error in this survey is 3%. Plus or minus. So when you talk about a 2% increase or 1% increase, it's within the margin of error. Yeah, pero may point yun ng Okta na you, you don't look at the numbers, you look at the trend in the last three uh, okay. surveys. So it's the same? Uh, well, <laughs> pareho silang ano eh. I think even in the, in the previous survey, uh, halos insignificant yung yeah. number eh. Pero the fact is that uh, it's, uh, it's a trend already okay. going up or going down. No matter how slight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And anyway, uh, an increase in the prices of fuel products takes effect tomorrow, October 15, and it's a big one. Diesel will become more expensive by 2 pesos and 70 centavos per liter. Gasoline by 2 pesos and 65 centavos, and kerosene by 2 pesos and 60 centavos per 60 centavos. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Bok, uh, here you go. Join us today, uh, StoryCon's resident political pundit, Tito Ronald Yama, sa uh, via Zoom. Uh, dahil po, siya po ay tinablan ng mikrobyo. Parang hindi naman nilalagnat. <laughs> Sir, so, so, sangiti, parang hindi nilalagnat. <laughs> Tinatablan ka pala ng mikrobyo. Parang, uh, parang, uh, parang may nagpakulam may ata sa akin. <laughs> Ayun. Oh. Parang may nagpakulam. Sino, ah, sino, sino kaya yun? Sino kaya? Sino kaya? Uh, Baka naman kasi meron kang ginalit nung nakalang linggo. Oo, oh, ang dami mo inaaway eh. <laughs> Wala. <laughs> oh. Dinetipensahan ko lang naman si Ed, Ed Linggaw. Oo. Oh, no? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, also joining us oh, yeah. is Anna Mar... Oh, okay. Oh, wala si Ami. Uh, but also joining us, uh, nawala lang sa Zoom right now, no? Also joining us is Anna Marie Pamintuan, Editor-in-Chief of the Philippine Star. From Faraway Paranaque. Yes, in their spanking new office. Mm -hmm. Well, lang. Uh, well, actually, more of a correction. Eh. Hindi siya 2% increase or decrease. Hindi siya 2% increase. 2 percentage points. Mm -hmm. Increase. Yes. Uh, iba yung, iba well, yung, uh, iba yung, iba yung percentage, iba yung oh, points. percentage, iba yung points. Eh. Uh, Duterte is uh, down by 1 percentage point. Yes. And independent... Uh, Not by... But in, for, in points. Down by, by. Pero by, hindi, by, hindi okay. percent, percent so points. So it's even more insignificant. Uh, hindi, hindi. Well, hindi ano ba? kasi kung percent, percent is a percent of the original. Mm -hmm. uh, percentage point is simply the numerical movement. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. So in other words, yung uh, medyo, increase sa BBM is from 38, uh, eh, from 37, naging 30, ay, sorry, 36. 36, 36. 38. Yeah. Two percentage points. Yun. Two percentage points. Mm -hmm. Still within the margin of error. Not three percent. Okay, okay. But uh, safe to say, it stays the same. Which is, I uh, know, uh, the way Okta reads it, it's still a trend from yeah. the last two quarters yeah. na na dadagdagan ka, no matter how small oh, it's si, like. Si Amis there na. Eh, hey, pero Ronald, lakas mo ng kanyang boses mo ha? Medyo mahina ka. Si Tita Amis ah. there. Nabawasan yung kwan. Nabawasan yung uh, independents. Yung neither Duterte nor Marcos. Mm -hmm. Dati kasi 31% yan eh. Ngayon ay 26 na lang. 26%. Down by 5 percentage points. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Tapos mm -hmm. yung tumaas yung uh, undecided. From 11 to 14. Yung ambivalent sila. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, that's a more discernible movement, right, Ronald? 
Yes, mga four, yes. four points. Right. Uh-huh. Yung mga, so, dumadami. Yung mga pink lawan, tumaas yata ng 2 percentage, two percentage points. points. So, mm-hmm. Bok, batiin natin si Tita, ano? si Tita Ami. Hi, Ami. <laughs> Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Okay. Ano, Patrick and Ed. Yeah, Ami. Ano pula ba yan? Ano? Pula ba yan o orange? Pula yan. Pula yan. Pula, pula yan. Pula. Pula. Oh, pula. Wala kinalama. Oh. It's always a good pula color yan. for on-cam. Yan, ang pula. Oh. A red jacket. <laughs> it, <laughs> hindi yan political. But anyway, Ami, oh, what, what, what do we have on the Philippine Star? Anong nakalayout dyan para sa in, for tomorrow's paper? Hmm. Hinihintay namin yung reaction pa ni Senator, former Senator Gordon doon sa dismissal nga nung case against okay, Duque. Uh, yung sa formally yung Ked uh, Duque. And nagsalita si Senator Bongo, sabi niya, yes, oh. well, he is denying, of course, na merong reward system and he emphasizes na meron daw malaking suporta yung war on drugs ni President Duterte. From the public. So tinitingnan natin. Yes. yes from the Para malaki daw yung public support. Mm. Ano mga sasabi mo doon, Ronald? Noon, yung latest pulse sa Asia, 84% ang mm. nagsasabi na dapat ay uh, parusahe, parusahan yung involved dyan sa AJK. Mm. Sa pulse sa Asia, mm. 84% nationwide, uh, 94% sa NCR, tapos 1% mm. lang ang nagdi-disagree. 13% ang undecided. 1% ang nagdi-disagree. Baka yun ang sinasabi ni Senator Bato, yung 1%. Okay. Uh, Hindi si Senator Bato, si Senator Bongo. Ay, Senator Bongo. Si Senator Bongo. Oh. Para ang akin ang... Remember, remember ano, ano, even during that time of President Duterte, nung bandang later na, nagkaroon din ng survey dyan eh, yung support niya for, ano, for his brand of a, a crackdown on drugs. At di ba karamihan doon sa mga tao, sabi nila ayaw pinapatay. Ayaw nilang pinapatay yung mga suspect. Merong ganong mga surveys na lumabas noon. Kaya medyo nag-slow down din sila doon sa, ano eh. doon sa mga patayan. Medyo nag-slow down. Medyo but, but it says a lot about surveys you know, and how respondents yeah. answer these surveys. At the peak of the Duterte yes. administration, there was... So, sorry, no, Ronald. There would seem to yes. be all out support for the drug Talaga. war. Alam mo, pero yes, yes, yes. Yes. Well, 93, I remember, 93%. Uh, oh, right. For, first year ni Duterte, oh. if I post anything remotely about human rights, talagang kukuyugin ka talaga. Oh. Uh, and now, the, the numbers yes. uh, appear to be different now. So, nagtigay nga ng criticism si Laila Dilima noong 2018. Ang uh, tawag sa kanya ni then Secretary of Foreign Affairs, uh, uh, Alan Peter Cayetano. Ang tawag kay Laila, DDS. No? Uh, destabilizer, denier, no? <laughs> etc. No? Ano yung S? Siyang tinapag ni Alan Peter na DDS, si, Al- si Laila de Lima daw. Oh. No? Ano, nung nagsalita sa UNC, si, si Secretary Alan Peter, sabi niya, we are only salvaging the country. Sabi niya, yun ang ginamit ng word. We are only salvaging the country. We are defending the human rights of Filipinos. Did, did he use the word salvaging, Ronald? Kasi yes, that seems yes. to be... Ano, uh, uh, may ibig uh, sabihin salvaging. salvaging. <laughs> are, Especially in the context of EJK. We are salvaging well, sa panahon the country. Sa panahon ngayon, hindi lang nagigit yan. Hindi, I'm sure sinadya yun ni Alan Peter. Sinadya ni Alan Peter. Choice of word niya. Sinadya yun. Sinadya yun. Diba, Ami, mahilig sa sakin yan, no? Hmm. Kaya, Pero, teka, paliwala mo yung, yung, yung konteksto ng word na salvage uh, oh. doon sa, sa lumang konteksto. Kasi marami mga bata, hindi naiintindihan siguro yan, eh. Ah. Hmm. Oh, ikaw na, Bok. Alam mo yan, panahon ah, ng Marso, no? Mo. Pag sinabing salvage. <laughs> Oo, oh, <laughs> dinampot ka, uh, dinetball ka, tapos tinapong ka lang. Oo, oh, oh. tinapong ka. Usually sa water, oh. kaya salvaging. Oh. Yung, yung act of salvaging is the act of retrieving the dead body na victim ah. na EJK. That was... Ah. So, salvaging so, actually became ano, salvaging ano, synonymous ano, ano, to ano, killings. Mm, it's not police too, reporter ano. pa ako, at matagal na matagal na yun, inaamin ko, kapag ikaw sinalvage, <laughs> madalas, nilalagay ka sa drum at uh, lalagay ng, ng cemento yung drum yun. at itatapon dun Bay. So, Manila Bay. Iba, yun yung iba, salvaging. Iba, mas matindi naman yun. <laughs> mas matindi naman yun. <laughs> yan yung panahon pa yan ni, panahon pa yan na first Marcos administration right, ginagawa right. yan. 
Pero ami uh, major effort 'yun. 'Yun yung mga talagang uh, ayaw nilang uh, pakita. Yung ayaw nilang makita talaga. Yung usual salvage, mm. tinatapon lang diyan sa sa bathroom. Tinatapon lang. Dan sa oh, tinatapon lang. Duha, tinatapon diyan sa common room. Sa dagat-dagatan. Oo, dal dal. Dagat-dagatan, marami doon. Oh, oh C5, banda ron, oh, Antipolo. Oh, 'yun. Tipit sa semento. Oh, 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 kasi semento pa inisip ni Ami tapos drum, tapos oh. ibabar ko. Kasi yung tension niya kinukuha sa tubig eh. Kasi kinukuha sa tubig 'yun 'yun. Yan nila talaga yung semento. Pero kahit saan ka pwede itapon, actually pwede ka na may itapon eh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, But I, I wonder if uh, no, no, our producers have a clip of uh, 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 the ambush interview that was given a while ago by Senator Bongo. Kasi ano eh, hmm. uh, it was quite ano, uh, ang sabi ni Senator Bongo, you know, he seemed very confident na oh, wala, he wala. can, hmm. ano, hmm. he can... Uh, face no the Senate, system. face an investigation and para magkaalaman daw kung ano ang ang naidulot na, I think he used the word kabutihan, ng uh, drug war. Mm. So, pero, pero I, I think it's... Actually, Patrick, uh, Patrick, uh, nagkinocorroborate lang ni Garma yung mga sinabi ni Las Cañas, ni Matobato, right. ni Asierto, ni Espinido. Espinido. So, kinocorroborate nila yung isa't isa, no? At yeah, but Ronald, Banda, Ronald, this is, mas mabigat ito dahil for the first time, Las Cañas and Matubato were yes. more or less low-level enforcers. Yes. Yes. Garma, yes. Uh, I think, Garma. would belong to the inner, inner circle. circle yan, oh. To the inner yes. circle, to the chain. Uh, talagang ano, yes. di ba? Pero, mind you, uh, 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 I think we need to qualify Penido lang. Pia Espinido is a poster boy. Mm -hmm. I think Pero we need to qualify Espinido lang. Poster boy yan. She was also oh. very careful, she was also very careful not to say that it was extrajudicial Right, right, right. She was very mm. careful to just say na a task force was being formed or had been formed right, right. in order to institute mm. a reward system mm. for uh, mm. killing uh, So yun ang role niya. Yun oh, lang sa oh, bigayan oh. ng pera. <laughs> Kumbaga, ano, parang, oh. although, although by implication, I, 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 we know, we know naman the implication of that, eh. pero of course, uh, legally, ano, eh, uh, may, pwede siyang gumunun eh. Uh, right. Kasi she's not admitting... Mm. And that's why to, she said sorry to the victims, mm -hmm. to the families of the victims at that hearing. Sinabi niya, hindi niya alam na Mangi, na may mga mangyayari. Saka ko. medyo naghugas kamay siya. Ano? No? Parang uh, she's yeah. ano. She's Patrick, a... ang hindi na-emphasize doon masyado, yung mga bangko. Mm -hmm. Yung mga, may tatlong bangko siyang binanggit na dinadaanan ng pera. ba diba? So dapat ma-investigahan din yung mga bangko na yun. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's beyond yung, ano, yung daily limit na kailangan mo i-report. Ano, i o oh, yung normal transaction. Oo. Oh. Oh, yung ayun yung magtitrigger. <laughs> Pinagagap muna tayo dahil meron doon, no? meron doon tayong commercial. <laughs> ba, impress ako. Hindi ba ko? May oh. commercial na tayo. Ah. Oo, oh, Ronald, balang alam, magkakaroon magka ka ng kape. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll be back. Uh, Uy, we are okay. honored dahil nandito si Patrick. No? Okay, Tagin okay. <laughs> Medyo naging busy lang. <laughs> ang, ang, itong ating boss pangkalawakan. Ikaw, Ayun. Ikaw, it, pandit pangkalawakan. Pandit kanton. Pandit kanton. Kasi lahat ng sahog nasa lamesa. Yan. Oh, yan oh. Oh, 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 ano, lahat sa sahogan. <laughs> Wait, teka, baka masita na tayo. You're watching Story Corner on One News. We'll be uh, taking, uh, talking to our first guest right after a quick break. So please stay tuned. This is the Story Conference Group or the Story Con Group.
We've got developing news and the stories behind the headlines. Welcome back to the Story Conference. I'm Patrick Paez. Kapalad Lingawin. And with us, Ami Paminto on the Philippine Star and Tito Ronald Yamas, our political pundit. Ayan, ha? Okay. Generic na generic. Hindi ko na nga tinuro eh. Oh, teka, hindi na ang guest natin. Oh, our first guest for this afternoon, human rights lawyer and former Bayan Muna representative Neri Colmenares. Sir, magandang hapon and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Magandang hapon, Ed. Hi, good afternoon po, Ed, Patrick, Ronald, Ami. Good afternoon po. Magandang hapon, Kong. Sir, let me start with this. Kasi explosive, at least by appearances, explosive yung testimony ni Garman nung Friday. Pero I'm just wondering, legally, ano yung implication nun with what she said and what she's trying to show? Ano yung sabit legally doon or liability legally doon ng mga people that she named? Kasi, uh, well, malaki ang implication ng legally, uh, lalo na sa pananagutin ni President Duterte. Ang naka, for example, sa ICC, Crime Against Humanity, ang kanyang kaso ni President Duterte, there are two elements there. No? The first is uh, widespread or systematic attack against civilians. Iyan proven na yun. No? Widespread yun, mula pare hanggang hulo. Civilian naman yung pinapatay. Yung second element kasi ng Crime Against Humanity is knowledge of the attack. Ibig sabihin, yung gumawa noon, alam niya na nag-a-attacky siya. Eh. So, ang proof niya kay President Duterte were the public orders na kill, kill, kill. And yung second, yung public statements niya, yung in-encourage yung mga polis, uh, i-amnesty ko kayo, bahala ko sa inyo. So, that's the second uh, evidence, kumbaga, ng knowledge niya. But itong sinabi ni Colonel Garma, ayan ang nagtahi talaga. Kasi hindi lang pala siya nag-order ng kill, He ordered the initiation using the Davao squad model. And pangalawa, yung siya ang nagpondo mismo. So that immediately changes everything. Kasi now, matutulog na talaga sa kanya ang EJK na to because not only did he order it, he even funded it. May reward for killings ng EJK. So medyo malaking bagay yung testimony ni Colonel Garma. But you, how much credence do you give it? Because, for example, Sigarma was very careful to avoid implicating herself. I mean, para para sa ano? Para sa Snow White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, pwede naman na hindi niya implicate yung sarili na. She can be charged later on kay Colonel, kay General Barayuga in another another case. But dito at least sinabi niya na na inutosan siya initially na sa kausapin yung isang uh, Colonel Leonardo in this case and then magput up ng structure at sinabi ni Leonardo sa kanya yung lahat ng nangyari no? so she was aware of all this information so malaking bagay din uh, on the part of Colonel Garma na insider siya eh. uh, so yeah It can be used. Don't say CC. In fact, the sworn statement on the crime against humanity. Kong, if you're going to be as a lawyer, there are some people who are saying that now, there are some people who are saying that now, because the details are out there anyway, and the details are out there, and people are coming out to talk. They say that they don't need the ICC. Why are they not here in the Philippines to investigate? What do you think of that proposal? Um, mistaken kasi ang ICC is a criminal proceedings. Ang quad hmm. is just an administrative proceeding. Walang makukulong sa quad eh. Uh, and hmm. here, ang kaso kasi dito sa Pilipinas, may kakaibang ano yan. Oh. In fact, it was encapsulized by one of the victims. Nang sabi, tinanong siya, bakit hindi kayo nagkaso dito? Sabi niya, una po, mahirap lang kami. Pangalawa, hindi amin yung batas. Hindi sa aming panig yung batas. So, basically, ang problem dito kasi ngayon, ang mga kaanak ng biktima, una, hindi sila binigyan ng report ng pulis ni mga blatter, soko reports, invest, wala, blanco talaga yan. May isang ang witness dun sa quad na ang sabi niya, ang anak niya, 9 years old, binaril sa pilikili, nang lumabas hmm. ang death certificate, bronco pneumonia ang nilagay. So, paano, paano kami magkaso sa pulis, eh, hindi naman pala namatay sa EJK, sabihin ng korte, eh, bronco pneumonia naman pala to eh. Yung mga witnesses nila, 2017, 2018, medyo hindi ko alam kung mahanap pa nila yun sa ngayon. Kaya uh, ang ICC nagsimula na yun, 2017, 2018, ang investigasyon, mahaba na eh. Yung korte ngayon pala magsisimula yan, and I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure 
na maging advantageous, at least sa ganitong ganit kalagayan ng any court case against President Duterte, especially since marami pa rin official sa gobyerno ang uh, medyo ano, sa kanya, eh, loyal sa kanya sa ngayon. Okay, uh, Noong 2021, oh. nag-request si Solicitor General Guevara sa ICC na bigyan sila ng uh, puwang para ipakita sa ICC na gumagana yung ating justice system. Binigyan sila ng almost a year. Wala rin nangyari. Wala na nadagdag na kaso dun sa libo-libong uh, uh, pinapatay ng EJK. No? Tama, Kaya, tama. Ngayon, halos tapos na. Ngayon, halos tapos na yung uh, ICC. No? Uh, pa na lang, timing na lang para, i para ipadala yung uh, international warrant. Kaya medyo pa na, uh, too late na dahil tapos na yung uh, preliminary investigation. Okay, Kong, as a uh, lawyer, yes, if, you're going to, yan, so... if, if you're going to assess this case, this testimony of Garma, uh, Kong, ano, as a lawyer, where would you put Garma? Uh, should she be a respondent in, a, in the ICC case or is she better off as a witness in the ICC case? As of now, based sa revelation niya, uh, witness siya, siyempre, gagamitin, pwede siyang gamitin ng prosecutor. Ang ICC case kasi is reserved for the, the highest officials committing the most serious crimes against, against uh, humanity. Eh. So, ang target ng ICC, they don't really go for the lower, but uh, kung kakayanin nila na presidente or prime minister, or at the very least mga general, so doon sila. No? So, for now, uh, ang testimony niya can be, of course, submitted sa ICC, and bahala ang prosecutor kung paan mo siya i-treat. Ang kakaiba lang dito, pwede naman siyang respondent then Pero at the same time, ang testimony niya, pwede rin magamit siyempre ng prosecutor kahit na respondent siya. So, you know, uh, depende yan sa prosecutor kung paano i-handle yan. But I think very important that, uh, in fact, we're uh, ch challenging President Marcos na isubmit nyo kaya sa ICC ang sworn statement. At uh, very important na officially mag mabigay nyo sa ICC despite your pronouncements na ayaw nyo na mag-cooperate sa ICC. Because this is a, a major breakthrough naman yung nangyari kay uh, Colonel Garma. Mm -hmm. Kung ang sabi po ng DOJ, they're, they're willing to investigate and do a preliminary investigation into the findings ng Quadcom if somebody files a complaint. So apparently, hindi sila pwedeng moto propio. I don't know why. Uh, but that's what, that's what they're saying. Eh. Dapat may magsampa muna ng kaso at uh, doon lamang aandar ang gulong. Uh, what do you think of that? And uh, is, this, is this on the, ano, on the table for you? Di ba, Kong, pwedeng moto propio yan? Yes, mali, ang, ma mali palagi. <laughs> mali palagi ang polis dyan at ang mga DOJ na kailangan ng complainant. People mm. of the Philippines nga yan. Eh. Yeah, yeah. Complainant yeah. dyan is just a witness. Mm -hmm. Ang complainant is just a witness. Mm -hmm. Kailangan sagot nila palagi, eh, sino magtitestigo sa amin? That's another story. But you can file the complaint. Hindi pwedeng isasabihin nila na pag walang complainant, walang kaso, uh, lalo na uh, people of the Philippines na mag-prosecute. So, uh, sa akin, pwede nang kasuhan yung ibang generals. For example, uh, General De La Rosa for uh, great threats or great coercion. Yung ginawa niya kay Kerwin Espinosa laban kay, ano, kay Senator De Lima. I mean, <laughs> matindi yun, no Kasi, in fact, gusto kong i-add, itong Quadcom it opened the new vista eh, na hindi lang pala ito hinggil sa droga. Now, there are people pala na, na, na naging biktima ng drug war, pero de wala silang kinalaman at all sa droga. At isa na doon si Senator Lila De Lima. Sinabing drug list, nakulong ng pitong taon, walang kinalaman sa droga. General Barayuga, ini-expose at ino-oppose lang ang korupsyon sa PCSO, walang kinalaman sa droga, pinatay under the drug war. Yung lawyers, nabanggit yun sa quad ko, lawyers, walang kinalaman sa droga except they represented drug suspects, pinatay under the drug war. Human rights defenders, na kung saan wala naman silang sinabi except criticizing Duterte for the human rights violations sa drug war, pinatay din yung mga human rights defenders. So it, it exposes President Duterte na it's just not about drugs. Sabi niya it's about the future of our children and the country, pero no, you're using this against your opponents, your political opponents and human rights defenders na kinikriticize ang policy mo. So, uh, nagbago tuloy pati ang motivation dito in terms of si Duterte kasi nakikita sa taong bayan, it wasn't really just about drugs. It was about also something else like uh, oppressing or persecuting uh, opposition leaders. 
Congressman, iniimbestiga na ng DOJ yung ano, yung kay Wesley Barayuga, ni-reopen na ng NBI eh. Their yes. court can take off from that case, di ba? Pwede naman eh, kahit wala na mag-file ng complaint para lang makuha yung testimony ni Garma. Because she yes. is implicated in that case. Pwedeng, pwedeng DOJ, if they really want to investigate, pwede magsimula dun sa case na yun eh. Ni-reopen na ng NBI actually. Diba? Yes. Ang Barayuga case, Ami, tama ka, it can mm. start now. In fact, pwedeng may separate case lang yan against those mm. responsible like Colonel Leonardo, kung sino man yung tinuro doon sa kasong yon like Colonel Garma, of course. Uh, because that's a separate matter. Pwede talaga yan. In fact, uh, tingin mm. ko, ang nagsumusuporta kay General Garma, malalakas naman na ano, eh, marami siyang mista, eh, marami siyang mga ano, yes. nandiyo di Martin Justice sa kanya. So, yeah, it can prosper. Dito at least, yun ang kakaiba. Kumpara dun sa ibang mahihirap na AJK victims ng drug war, I think General Barayuga's case can really prosper, especially since proven, since proven na wala talaga siyang kinalaman sa droga. It's all about corruption in the PCSO, kaya siya pinatay. Mm -hmm. uh, kung uh, maliban dyan sa mga kaso na yan, baka may isa tayong nakakalimutan na malaking krimen din. Kahit uh, mahirap sampahan ng kaso, yung pa, yung krimen na binanggit ni uh, Colonel Espinido na sabi niya na the biggest uh, criminal organization is the Philippine National Police. Sabi ni Shell Jokno uh, last week, uh, Duterte has transformed the Philippine National Police into a killing machine. At sabi ng isang leader uh, kahapon uh, ng human rights ay this is uh, the biggest serial killer in the in the history of our country. So, ibig sabihin na uh, kong yung institusyon na winawasak ng ganitong klasing uh, 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 programa ni ex-president Duterte ay is unmeasurable. Kahit walang kaso na pwedeng isama, pero dapat lagi yeah. pa ipamukha that our institutions yeah. are being destroyed. No, yes. yung hindi na pag-uusapan. Tama lang, tama. In fact, pero matagal nang sinasabi ng Human Rights Defender siya. Eh. At that time of Gloria Arroyo, libo rin yung EJK doon. Eh. Ang mga biktima nga lang doon, aktivista, ang, ang warning doon, ginamit yung at, at that time the state security forces uh, for EJK, na General Palparan and so on. But nobody really took that seriously eh. kasi parang mga oh, aktivista yan. Ngayon, later on, thousands nang pinatay sa EJK under Duterte. So that is, that is a lesson. No? There are two lessons here. Eh. Na dapat sa watain itong mga paggamit ng uh, kapulisan na state security forces, military, for uh, yun mga katulad na yung mga EJKs and uh, enforces appearances. Uh, siguro, ang second lesson dito, uh, ka, pag nasa poder kayo, huwag kayo mag-abuso. Kasi there will come a time na abutin kayo ng ustisya. Eh. And that's what's happening now. Kasi if you look at the Quadcom, the, the police who were so you know, arrogant during the time of Duterte, medyo marami sa kanila takot na takot sa na maimbestiga doon. Eh. So, yeah, yan talaga. They were so assured during the time of Duterte na walang mangyayari sa amin. Presidente ang nag-assure na walang mangyayari sa amin. And now, kahit si President Duterte cannot even assure uh, na hindi siya makulong. So, that's a lesson na rin dito sa nangyari sa EJK kay President Duterte na sana huwag pamarisan ng mga susunod na mga presidente ng ating bansa. Pero sir, so to think of the man sa, from a different point of view or a different angle, I mean, um, uh, well, it's good that yung Quadco marami na uungkat na mga revelations uh, na, that we would never have seen uh, or heard from uh, in the previous administration. But on the other hand, some are also, also pointing out that uh, it's, this is the same Congress that, uh, that uh, cheered on the drug war in the previous administration, more or less the same people. Uh, I mean, the, the, the faces do look familiar, <laughs> and uh, uh -huh. it, it is a change of tune by, by most of them. Of course, there were a few uh, who, who, were, who were consistent uh, from before, uh, those who opposed the drug war in, in the lower chamber, but most of them uh, cheered it on. And, and now, now that it's uh, politically convenient, eh, medyo, ano, uh, <laughs> Yes, correct ka dyan, Ed. Eh. Uh, nung panahon ni Duterte, everybody was praising the drug war. 
walang nagre-reklamo against China sa West Philippines. Ilan lang sa amin, ilan lang kami ang nagsasalita on that. Tapos ngayon biglang tapang-tapang na nila against China, etc. Ngayon may investigation. Pero siyempre, sunggaban pa rin yan ng mga pamilya ng biktima. Hmm whatever the background. Kasi this is just an opportunity na talaga may chance sila na isip nila na magkaroon ng linaw ang pagkamatay ng kaanak nila. Eh. So, uh, yun, yun pa rin ang kinaiba rin siyempre ng, ano, ng, uh, ng tawag dito, ng ICC sa Quadcom. Because, of course, this is just a congressional investigation. Eh. So, siyempre, subject yan sa bagaris ng uh, kung ano man yung ihip ng hangin. Kaya maganda talaga din na sa korte sana yan, like the ICC. But in any case, tama ka Ed na, ano, na <laughs> another lesson siguro yan. Ano, na pag you are a member of Congress or the Senate for that matter, checks and balance yan. Hindi kailangan sumunod ka sa presidente every time the president says so. Tsaka sa subordinates naman, mga cabinet member. If you think the president is wrong, it's your duty to the Filipino people to say that it's wrong pinamimigay sa China ang West Philippines, si tahimik ka lang. You're the NICA head, you're the state, the security agency, NS, ano, national security agency head ka, tahimik ka. Uh, di ba? Eh, yung ganun sa PNP rin, mga PNP generals ng panahon yun, ni wala kayong honey ho doon sa drug war. So basically, that's a third lesson siguro na Titigan nyo naman, if you're in a, an appointed, appointed position, elected position, your role in the constitutional scheme of things, na checks and balance ito. Uh, hindi pwedeng payagan ang isang tao to rule over the country by whim and by arbitrary uh, decisions. Eh. So, but still, uh, despite that, Ed, magandang development ang quad. And many of the victims were very happy that the quad, in fact, the fact na nakapagkwento sila sa quad, alam mo, mm -hmm. pag tinatanong ko sila, tuwan-tuwa sila na na at least lumabas. Kinikim-kim nila yan for so many years. At sa ngayon na ilabas nila at na-confront nila ha, ang mga police uh, officers na pumatingin nila, pumatay sa kaanak nila, na-confront nila at hindi makasagot sa kanila. At uh, in the end, uh, you know, very, very important development itong quad uh, hearings. Pero, and I hope ituloy pa nila. Pero just uh, three months ago, uh, Kong Neri, eh, eh, yung mga senador na nag-iimbestiga, sinisisi pa yung mga biktima. Bakit daw hindi sila nagsampan ng kaso noon? Sinisisi pa yung mga abogado. No? Kaya medyo uminit yung ulo ko no pinapanood ko yun. Eh. <laughs> no? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, ganun lang talaga. Kaya ang fourth lesson siguro dyan, pumili ng mabuting senador. <laughs> hindi yung uh, depende sa, di ba, uh, you know, In any case, nandiyan na tayo and uh, I hope na ang Senate rin, of course, uh, can also take up the cudgels of EJK, no? So, yeah, basta the Quadcom is doing well as far as the victims are concerned, ituloy lang nila at maungkat pa. And sana naman, ito yung ano naman, there is a new vista opened by the Quadcom. Eh. Yung sinabi kong mga pinatay, na hindi naman involved sa drugs talaga. Eh, kasi EJK nung drug suspects yung first meetings ng quad. Eh. Ito ngayon, ito yung mga sinabi ko na opposition leaders, uh, anti-corruption general, di ba? human rights defenders, lawyers, na dapat din investigahan ng quad because they died in the same pattern. They died as in, without justice then or in the case of Senator Dilima, wala pang ustisya ang pagkakulong niya. And of course, uh, nag ang mga witnesses doon, marami din ha. And I'm sure uh, marami pang revelations kung sakaling buksan ng Quad, uh, quad Committee ang um, this vista opened by the revelations sa recent uh, Quad hearings. Okay, marami salamat. Thanks for joining the StoryCon, human rights lawyer and former congressman, Neri Colmenares. Thank you, sir. Maraming Thank salamat you, sir. po. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat, Kong. Let's bring in our second guest for today, Octa President uh, Professor Ranjit Rai. Sir, magandang hapon and uh, good to see you again. Uh, good afternoon, hapon Professor. To yeah, good afternoon to all of you and to all our tele viewers. Mm, sir, ang pinaka-aabangan ng lahat, <laughs> yung, uh, yung inyong mga quarterly, <laughs> yung inyong mga quarterly zoom in doon sa uh, BBM and uh, Duterte support uh, surveys. Uh, sir, well, okay, um, we, we, we have a, kahit papano, kasi we already seen uh, the numbers, uh, um, uh, may upward trend with BBM, up by two percentage points, downward trend with uh, Duterte, 
down by one percentage point. Uh, for independents, uh, down by five percentage points. Opposition up by two percentage points, and so on down the line. Uh, but, but sir, the qualifier being na ano na na all these are still within yung margin of error na three uh, plus or minus three percentage points ng uh, ng ng survey. But I think you also qualified na. Uh, what's important to look at is the trend in the last three surveys more than the numbers themselves. Yes, yes, uh, you're completely correct, uh, uh, Ed, no? that uh, when we look at these numbers, it's important not just to focus on the final numbers, the quarter to quarter changes, but the trend. So for this particular probe, uh, which is, by the way, for many people are, is highly controversial, no? but then again, uh, because we don't have parties here, uh, we're really trying just to measure, um, you know, the strength of the brand, mm, the brand preference yeah. of uh, our kababayans. Uh, we also want to emphasize that uh, the survey was done at a particular period, po. No, uh, yan ay uh, um, kasaad naman dito na yung I amin mean, ay 1,200 mm -hmm. respondents uh, from all around the country from August 28 to September 2. So, marami na nangyari since that time. And so, for political pundits like uh, Secretary uh, uh, Sisek, no, uh, we'll, we'll probably have some, you know, some other forecasts, no, based on these uh, the, the, the data that we're showing. Uh, a second point we want to uh, emphasize is that these numbers are not, uh, you know, when they compare it from quarter to quarter, mababa lang naman eh. They're very slight changes, no. Um, I think notable here is the two-point increase in uh, for the present nationally. But then again, it's supported by, at the granular level, by a 15-point increase in Class E, 15 point, mm -hmm. uh, 15 mm -hmm. percentage point increase in Class E. Now, when you look at the numbers of uh, the Duterte family as a brand, uh, it went down by only one uh, percent nationally. But when you look at the granular level, they they went down uh, double uh, digits, no, something like 11 percent sa Class E over the same period. Mm, These mm. are dramatic. That's why you want to emphasize those points. But on the national level, uh, you know, they, they had ups and downs. Um, the, the, the president and the administration, uh, you know, we also want to emphasize third third point. Ha? The question in Filipino is, alin sa sumusunod ang pinaka naglalarawan ng sinusuporta ninyo sa politika? So, yan yung, ano, yan yung basic question. And uh, dahil wala tayong mga partido, Ang unang kategory is, I support President Bongbong Marcos Jr. and the administration. I am pro-Marcos. The uh, next, next is, I um, uh, support the Duterte family and their political alliance. I am pro-Duterte. The third is, of course, I am the opposition. I support the opposition. We define the opposition here, also when you see it, our own media brief, as the opposition associated with uh, Lenny Robredo, Yung traditional. Uh, Teresa Ontiveros, the traditional opposition liberal party, and the movements, the Dilawan. So we explained this to the people we're interviewing, and they want it to be categorized. Okay, and so uh, when you look at the numbers of the opposition, they actually went up this quarter from five to seven. I know it's not dramatic, no? But the fact that it's moving up, uh, it shows some sign of life and some sign of uh, change, no? Uh, even if it's within the margin of error. But when you look grad granular, uh, they went up in ABC. They went up in NCR a little bit. So these are the things you want to emphasize. And then, of course, the trend is still con continuous from the first, second, and third quarter that a, a great number of Filipinos, something like 40%, would not like to be classified based on our classification. 31% uh, okay. are independents, and the rest refused. No? So they're ambivalent Pro about... Pro Professor uh, Rai... Pag-usapan natin yung Class E na apparently doon significant yung baba ni Duterte at akyat ni Marcos. Uh, how, what should we read into this? We're talking about Class E. Ma, ito yung masa. Ito talaga yung masa. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tumaas yung support ni Marcos doon sa masa. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, would you hazard a guess why? You know, it's, it's the contrast. No? So, plus 15 yung pro Marcos as a Class E and minus 11 yung sa mm -hmm. Duterte, no? So I, I think, you know, it, it has really to do with uh, the interventions, the initiatives of the administration as far as, I don't know, their pro-poor programs, no? Kasi when I can't think of any 
uh, significant intervention beyond that. Eh. They, 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 they poured in billions in Mindanao and Visayas mm -hmm. where they, in Mindanao, they sustained their, uh, their support. In, in Visayas, they were able to even gain uh, this quarter. And the news that I have, at least the information I have, is that a lot of resources were poured into, uh, uh, you know, Ayuda, Ayuda. largely anti-poverty program. So maybe that kicked in it. It took in two quarters for people to see it, mm -hmm. but it actually kicked in. Now, nationally, when you look at our probe on jobs and the economy, um, while you know it, it was on a downward trend for some time, uh, it went up in the last quarter a little bit. So there was a little alleviation, and, that, and that's also somewhat um, reinforced by the fact that inflation also went down slightly uh, over those the last two quarters. So you know all of these things put together, um, maybe number one government interventions, number two the you know the massive information drive against the Duterte family and all of these things that are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, Congressman Neri Colonize talked about a lot of them earlier. Enter the improving situation as far as inflation, jobs, no, uh, are concerned. So, but uh, can the government, can the administration sustain this? We don't know. But what we do, what we can see from quarter to quarter, is an upward trend. Uh, for the Duterte brand, it's you know on a downward trend, but you know the changes have been slight from second to the third quarter, just one percent. Uh, 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 prop, prop. Uh... Uh, kayo lang ang gumagawa nito eh, di ba? Nung ganitong klaseng uh, survey. Uh, yes. Ito yata yung ikatlo nyo na yes, safe sir. survey, di ba? Ikatlo ito. At uh, ang interesado ako, ano yung, paano kayo nagpasya na gumawa ng ganitong survey na hindi naman ginagawa dati? No? Hindi ginagawa dati at kahit ngayon, kayo lang ang gumagawa. Ikalawa, anong assessment nyo dito sa tatlong survey na ginawa nyo? Pagpapatuloy nyo ba ito? Uh, magiging paano ba to, permanent aspect ng inyong mga surveys? At panghuli, anong relasyon nito dun sa mga ibang bahagi na inyong survey like uh, approval rating? Dahil parang magkalayo sila eh. No? Yeah. Parang, uh, parang uh, ano ba yan? Apples and oranges? Or talagang uh, hindi pa napag-aaralan ng maigi yung kaibahan? Unang-una, uh, hindi to well, apples, apples and oranges if you compare this with the uh, trust and approval ratings. Mm. No? Uh, where we have specific people with specific job classifications and jobs, no, uh, or jobs, no, or, uh, and and and, and uh, maybe it's harder to compare, you know, the work of let's say Jesus Codero and uh, the vice president, no. I, I mean, when you answer the survey, that's not how you answer it. Eh? But here it's very clear when you're given this question, uh, ba mas, uh, sang group of grupo mas preferred ka? Now. Uh, ang, ang challenge kasi sa Okta is to come out with a, you know, we're trying to evolve a, a political culture probe, no? Um, and in our attempts to do so, we hit a snag, no? Um, the history of this survey was, this was commissioned initially uh, uh, in the first quarter of this year, and we released it, and then some people said, you know, why don't you test it? Uh, you know, see if, if this survey means something. Um, we don't expect that it will be relevant after the midterms. I think we're really um, we're really re releasing this as part of a broader probe on uh, politics in our society, no? Um, the state of uh, preferences uh, as as far as our political landscape is concerned. Uh, so that's how it is, uh, Sir Ronald. Ito yung ano namin. Ito yung uh, nangyare uh, so far. Uh, ang assessment namin may sumasagot eh. May gusto magpaklasify. But yun nga, may marami rin nagsasabing, ayaw namin, ayaw namin yung classification ninyo eh. Mm -hmm. So then, at 11%, no? uh, yung, yung iba naman, sinasabi, uh, you know, basically, ayaw nila yung classification ng Duterte, uh, Marcos, at opposition. Yun ang 31% na nagsasabi, ah, sorry, 26% na nagsasabi, na independent sila. And that by itself is a position na. Ah. And, it, and, and uh, we, in the report, we also showed that actually, sila ang uh, pinakamalaking nalagasan in this particular survey. So some people have taken a side. And uh, the two groups that benefited from independents taking a side, number one, the opposition, number two, the pro-Marcos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Professor, pahabol ko lang. Uh, tinanong, tinanong kita dati, you said you were going to conduct a survey 
para malaman kung alam ng mga tao kung ano ang trabaho ng mga senador in relation to your surveys on that so-called senatorial boss. Itutuloy niyo ba yun? Yeah, to, ano, we're, we're still designing the question. Pero dahil malakas kayo sa amin, hmm. mami, tutuloy namin yun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kahit napakamahal itanong yung tanong na yun pero thank you thank you oh yeah so but it's quite uh, uh, awareness uh, oh yeah uh, paano pa kung masasabi it is a trend kung within the margin of error yung difference no uh, how can it be a trend uh, usually kasi ano na sa isip ko kasi ang trend ay yung labas ng margin of error eh. no di ba yeah, uh, uh, ang amin naman ang amin argument dito is that for three quarters for basically two straight quarters pababa yung numbers. Now, while hindi nag-improve, at when you look at the granular level, significant yung mga changes eh. Sa lalo na, class E. So, one can say, one can argue that it has not improved. So, in our view, uh, it's in a downward trend. Dalawa na kasing points eh. Pwede mo sabihin eh. Now, when you look at uh, the numbers from January, from the start of the year, you can see kagad, no, from 20%, uh, percent, now it's 15%. Now, so that then, then you can say from the long view, it looks like it's on a down, downward trend. But we, we don't know. Next quarter, it could actually improve. Nakonya, five points na mm. eh, mm. since we started. Yeah. You know, one can say it's improving. One can say it's an upward trend. Okay. But then, if, then again, we were very clear when you look at the base numbers, the actual national numbers, we're all within the margin of error. But you know, we have to tell the story of the numbers at the regional and class level. And that's where... Uh, the major uh, changes were observed. Uh, 11 point decrease in class E for those who identify themselves as pro Duterte, and a 15 point increase in class E for those who identify themselves as pro Marcos. Yes. So, okay. Okay. which uh, solidifies our argument that there, there exists really a downward trend. Okay, thank you for joining the StoryCon, Professor Ranjit Rai, President of Okta Research. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Salamat, Prof. Okay, thank you for joining StoryCon today. Amin Pamintuan, Editor-in-Chief of The Star, and Tito Ronald Yamas, our resident political pundit. Join us again tomorrow at 4 p.m. for the StoryCon. Generic. Generic. I'm not lingao. I'm Patrick Pius, and we are One News, all sides, all the time. This is the Story Conference Group or the Story Conference Group.